Homestead Corner and today I have eight tips for first-time chicken owners. So today I'm going to share with you my top eight tips for first-time chicken owners. So number one, before you get chickens, you're going to want to decide which chickens are right for you. Do you want just egg layers? Um, ornamental chickens like bantams or like more of a pet chicken um, or do you want a meat chicken are you gonna raise them just for meat or are you looking for a dual purpose bird so that's gonna be really important for you to decide what kind of bird to get once you realize um, which ones are dual purpose which ones are you know just for eggs and not they're all can be eaten but the smaller chickens are not going to be as worth the time if you're going for just meat chickens. So you're really going to want to decide that before you do anything else. So that's my number one tip is make that decision to get started. All right, number two, you do not have to get fancy with your coop. Um, you can go with a big fancy coop and that is wonderful, but your chickens do not care. Um, it's going to be all about you. <clears throat> so um, you don't have to get crazy with it. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Um, you could, I have seen chickens live comfortably and happily in a top of a, like a truck cap um, out on cinder blocks with some tarp and it's okay. It works good for them. They need something dry so they can get out of the weather and something draft free so they can get and when it's really cold in the winter time you want to keep the draft down so if they get moist at all um, you you don't want them uh, that draft can cause frostbite and stuff so you want to be you want to give them plenty of room so they can get around and interact together with a, if they're too cooped up they'll fight and that's not good. They'll peck at each other. They'll start making each other bleed. And then you've got all these problems. But so you just want to make sure they have plenty of room. Uh, and you want to make sure they have nest boxes. Um, so and you don't need a ton of nest boxes. We have currently we have three nest boxes for 18 chickens. They all lay eggs in two nest boxes. And they don't want to lay eggs anywhere else. So, um, so you could have a nest box for every chicken, but they probably won't use them. And uh, you really just need to make sure you have enough nest boxes for how many chickens you're going to have. So if you have four or five nest boxes, you know, you should be good with quite a few chickens. <laughs> and be aware of chicken math, because when you go to get one chicken and you come home with six, it's, ah, it happens. It happens. All right. Let's see. You also want to make sure that there is a place for them to roost in there, um, in their coop, so they can get up off the ground. They don't like to sleep on the ground at nighttime. They like to get up and roost. So you want to make sure they have a nice, plenty of room for everybody to roost. We have two roosts in ours. One's kind of, they're kind of diagonal like this. And they all kind of pack together. You know, in the summertime they spread out, but in the wintertime they all pack together to kind of keep that heat together. So it's nice. So in the summer they have plenty of room when it's hot for them. And, uh, and you also want to make sure that your coop is predator proof. Um, you want to know about what predators are in your area. Um, we have foxes, which are a big problem because we tried to free range and it just didn't work for us. Uh, they kept eating our chickens so and that's not good I'm not raising chickens to feed the foxes or the coyotes or any of the other stuff that's out there skulking around looking for a free meal so um, you definitely want to know what your predators are and make sure that your coop is predator proof so nothing's gonna get in there and harm your girls and number three free range as much as you can um, we have a predator problem, so we free range during the day when we can be out there with the chickens. Um, they love to go around the yard, clean up the bugs. They're wonderful tick control, but we can't leave them out there even during the day 
without someone in the yard because the the foxes and the coyotes and stuff they don't care they'll come right up and take them and uh and but free ranging them is going to give them a more natural diet to what they're used to it's going to keep um and uh, it's going to give them lots and lots of exercise, which they need. It's great for them to get exercise. But you want to keep predators in mind when you're thinking about free ranging. All right, number four, feed them your kitchen scraps as much as you can. Um, so if you have the couple ugly pieces of cabbage you take off, throw it in a bowl. Um, the ends you cut off, the carrots, the peels that you don't use, throw them in a bowl. Um, the chickens are going to make you some compost anyway, so um, you don't want to compost all of that. That is nutrient-rich food that you can give to your chickens, and it's going to help them be more healthy, and it's just really, really good for them. And it saves you money on feed also, which is another great thing. All right. Number five. Don't leave the lights on to force them to lay. A lot of people will tell you that you can leave the light on, it will force the chickens to lay, and it will. But it's gonna make your chickens get spent way soon before their time. We have chickens that are seven years old that still lay eggs. We go all natural with the lighting. Uh -huh. In the winter time, they slow down on laying in the fall, and we don't get a lot of eggs through the winter, but we still get a few here and there, and that's okay. Um, we're okay with that. They still supply enough eggs for our family most of the time. I have had to buy eggs in the middle okay, of winter so before. You don't want to leave those lights on for them. They will lay a little bit anyway, and it will slow down in the winter, but that is okay. They need the break also because these girls are egg laying machines in the spring and summer and early fall. I mean, an egg a day, can you imagine? They need a break too. So we don't use lights. Um, we've never used any lights for our chickens. We have a light in the coop. So like when it's dark and dreary in the winter and we have to clean the coop, we can see. But, um, but we don't use any lights other than that. Um, number six. Recycle your eggshells. Um, after you use your eggs, dry out the shells and feed them back to them. It gives them the calcium that they need for their feathers, for producing another eggshell, um, for the next one. And if you just dry those out, crush them up, and feed them back to the chickens, there's no waste that way. Um, and it's really good and gives them a lot of calcium that they need. All right, number seven. I know everybody wants to keep their chickens warm and comfortable, but you do not need to heat your chicken coops in the winter time. We live in Maine up in the mountains and it is cold here in the winter. It gets down, we had, oh, it gets way down. Minus 25, minus 30. We had two or three weeks in January a few years ago that it was minus 25 for weeks solid and lower. Those were like the highs of the days. And the chickens were fine. As long as they have plenty of ventilation in their coop, they don't need heat. They just need to stay dry. That's the key factor is that they're dry and draft free. So if you can just give them plenty of ventilation keep them draft free and dry and your chickens will do fine it doesn't matter how cold it is they really they can handle it all those feathers keep them toasty warm all right <clears throat> and number eight brings us to keeping the coop clean that is a key thing it keeps the pests down it keeps your eggs clean um, you're going to want to decide if you want to wash your eggs or if you don't want to wash your eggs. And that is a personal decision for everybody. Um, I don't wash my eggs if I don't have to. I, if, as long as the eggs are clean, they have a natural bloom on them that's going to help them last longer. Those eggs are going to last and last and last. 
and stay fresh as long as you keep that bloom on it. So um, keeping your nest box clean is a key factor in keeping those eggs clean. You still will get messes once in a while, but if your nest box is clean, most of your eggs are going to be clean when you bring them in. Wipe off the little wood chips or hay that might get stuck to it, but um, but then if you can leave that bloom on, the egg is going to last so much longer and you're not going to have to worry about it because the eggshell is porous and when you pull that bloom, when you wash that bloom off, air starts seeping in, which is why old eggs float. So those are my eight tips for new chicken keepers and people thinking about getting chickens. And uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.